Today we're just going to look at <clears throat> a, you know, a quick review of Salesforce campaigns. Uh, so a lot of people get Salesforce Sales Cloud, um, you know, whether you're in a small startup uh, or whether you're on a sales team or a marketing team. Uh, maybe you're, you know, you've got multiple people on both teams trying to work together and kind of uh, decide how you want to handle some uh, campaign features in terms of like leads and where are we sourcing leads from. And that'd be, that's going to be the Salesforce campaigns object. So if I click into this object, uh, I just spun up a, a free trial account here. So you can see if I go to all active campaigns, they've got a couple different versions, a conference, uh, widgets webinar, and then like an email type of campaign. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to hit new here. Uh, if I hit new, this is going to be exactly how it's going to look out of the box if you had just purchased Salesforce or if you're also on a trial. So I'm just going to say, you know, test email campaign. Let's say I want to send like an email blast to um, 50 leads or however many leads I have in the system. I'm going to go ahead and mark this as active um, just because, uh, you know, I'm planning to use it. Uh, this has some other um, kind of not complexity, but some other use for it. If you're using like a marketing automation platform that's um, plugged into the back of this, like Pardot. Um, but for now, we're just going to, uh, you know, click it off to show that it's something that's active. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in progress since I plan to send the emails out today. And I'm going to put today's date. And I'm going to say, you know, this is going to be a two-step email campaign. And we're going to finish up by the end of the year. Uh, I'm going to change this type to email. If you look at this drop down again, this is like what comes out of the box with Salesforce. Like all these things can be changed, right? Um, so maybe you're having like, you know, physical mail that you're sending out or um, some type of trade show or something that you want to add a value here for. All this stuff, just like any fields in Salesforce are customizable. Um, you might want to write a, you know, brief description in here. Um, test email and description. Just so if, you know, multiple people are working on this, they can see kind of what what's going on. And then this next part gets a little interesting, right? So you could put like your budget of costs in the campaign so maybe you're, you know, paying a, if you're a small business or startup, maybe you're, you know, subcontracting this, subcontracting this out to a firm, right? Or maybe uh, you don't have a, like your email platform linked up to Salesforce. So you're paying for uh, MailChimp and you've got, you know, like a thousand dollar charge or whatever it is. So you can put your budgeted costs in the campaign um, here uh, and then, well, Budgeted costs, right, is what you expect to spend. So maybe you want to throw in some budget to work with some contractors, whatever it is. And then your actual cost, once you're done with this campaign, um, you can enter like the amounts that you spend. So, you know, I've seen a lot of businesses not really use any of this stuff. They're all really doing it kind of like out of their accounting system um, to get started. Uh, it just depends kind of like who who you are, what your skill set is, um, who's in charge of building these reports. But uh, I obviously, you know, being a Salesforce admin and um, having my own business for a little bit, these were things that I used. Um, and then what you expect to make from the campaign. Obviously, you're going to need data to make like an educated guess out of that. Um, so, you know, this is only as useful as, as you know, information that you have. But I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And you can see here, um, there's a couple of campaign member statuses. And uh, other than that, everything's zero. So you're probably going to wonder, like, what is a campaign member status? We'll get into that. Um, so you can see here under campaign members, you can add two types of individuals. You can add leads and you can also add contacts. Uh, I believe on one of the coming releases, you're actually going to be able to relate campaigns to accounts as well. Um, so it doesn't look like it's activated yet. Um, so for now, you know, if you're watching this video, just know that, you know, campaigns are going to relate to leads, contacts, and um, you are going to have a relationship here where you can see, you know, opportunities. Um, I'll, I'll kind of elaborate on this in a second. But coming in the future, you're also going to be able to look at different accounts that uh, this campaign is related to. So. One thing before I kind of demo this out is let's say we have a um, lead that's in our system. You know, a, a lead defined in Salesforce is somebody that we think has the intent or maybe they have the right 
um, profile for us to sell to. So if you're purchasing lists or maybe you're using like a Zoom info or something like that, and you're not really like an account-based marketing firm uh, or account-based uh, marketing, you know, like sales operation, then you're typically going to import a lot of that data as leads. Um, from there, as you work those leads through the funnel, you know, try to make first contact, try to see if there's actual intent to buy. Maybe someone comes in off your website, not really good fit. You disqualify them, but you convert those leads into opportunities. So if you have a lead associated to a campaign and you make a conversion into an opportunity where you're going to go into a formal sales cycle, that's how you build that relationship. You can also tag the opportunities with the campaign after the fact. Um, and then, you know, in the account based model, maybe, you know, you're selling to Fortune 500 companies, you're able to use one of these uh, kind of, you know, data services like Zoom Info and different things like that to get, you know, the top four executives at Coca Cola, uh, Frito Lay, and another company that you're targeting. You would, you know, import all those accounts and contacts into Salesforce. And then maybe you want to specifically send a certain campaign to, you know, chief operations officers at these organizations. So you'd add those contacts. And then if as they kind of turn into campaigns, let's say you get a couple of responses, or I mean, uh, as they turn into opportunities, because you get some responses to your email campaign, then you convert them, create opportunities, and you'd see them related. So just quick note here in the description of like how these are two different types of individuals in our database. We can add them both to campaigns and as we convert them, um, either if it's, if, it, if it's a lead, it's going to be converted. If it's a contact, we might just create an opportunity and associate it. You will then see the opportunities uh, associated. So you can see here, I've got like a quick add leads button. So if I click add leads, um, let me say sample. Yep. So if I click sample, you can see that I've got a bunch of names in here that have sample because I'm in the free trial and they pop up. Um, so I could just one by one kind of do things this way, right? But you can tell that's going to get pretty inefficient. Um, same thing with add contacts. Click sample, same thing, right? I can kind of look at these people. I'll, I'll add a couple here. I'm going to leave it as sent. I'm going to add one lead to just so you can see that. I'm going to also leave this as sent. Uh, and I left the status as sent. I mean, statuses, again, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to use this manually if you're not, uh, if, you, if you're using some type of like uh, maybe email service or maybe you're just sending like a blast at a Gmail doing them individually. Like, are you going to come in here and individually mark on the campaign as responded or sent? Uh, that's debatable if you're if you're using it just to get started here. Uh, obviously, once you start using different type of MarTech platforms, you're going to be able to automate this based on, okay, have I sent something? Has it been opened? Uh, you can also have details on the record. So this is, you know, but this can be used in a simple way. It can also get a lot more complex, probably not enough um, information or too many discrepancies here to go over in like a high level uh, sample or overview. You can see here, you can manage members, you can import leads and contacts, and then you can click here to also send a list email. So I can generate that email out of Salesforce. Now, depending on, uh, this is like another topic here where it probably warrants a whole nother video. If you actually want to send marketing or sales emails out of Salesforce, uh, I definitely recommend kind of having your Gmail or Outlook, um, you know, it, it kind of tied in with Salesforce. If not, you're going to be sending from a Salesforce server, um, high likelihood of um, possibly getting kind of blocked on that. Uh, also, you're kind of limited to how pretty you can make this email, right? You can also use some email templates, but uh, you know, a lot of times what, what you'll see is people kind of sending these list emails out of, again, Pardot, HubSpot, uh, MailChimp, Constant Contact, a lot of different um, types of services, right? So uh, let's pretend that we want to kind of add leads in bulk. So I'm going to come over here to my list view and I'm going to say all open leads. 
again, I've only got a small subset here, but I can kind of click down this side. Um, and this might look different in your org if you're using record types. Just know that if you are using record types, maybe you're not going to see this kind of uh, little checkbox here on the side. And then if I'm also stuck on the recently viewed, um, actually on this one I have it, uh, probably because I don't have record types, I can still select. I'm going to go back to all open leads. Um, and let's say a little quick note, just like in Excel, if I hit here and shift, I can actually highlight all these at the same time. I'm going to say add to campaign. So now I've just bulk added all of these um, people to my test email campaign, and I'm going to submit. Same thing goes for contacts. If I want to come over to contacts, say all contacts, I'm just going to click this button here at the top to also highlight all of them. Say add, test email campaign, submit. Perfect. So now if I go back to my campaigns, I can see 13 members here included in this campaign. And you can see by default, um, one of these contacts that I, that I added to uh, my campaign was associated with uh, a open opportunities in the system. So if I click on this, I can see that this guy, you know, uh, what was his name? John Amos, uh, was related to this opportunity that was kind of like in our pipeline and on a certain stage. So the amount of the opportunity ended up getting, uh, related back to my campaign. And you can also see, see here on the side, you can have kind of have a widget campaign influence uh, where you can see the different uh, kind of associations with campaigns. So what, one thing uh, you'll want to note here as well is this is one of the sample campaigns that came in the system. My campaign was a new campaign, test email campaign. You can't see here, I have to click view all. So you can have uh, different campaigns, a, a multitude of campaigns affecting a opportunity uh, or a lead. And, uh, you know, that that comes into, that's going to lead you to also some more complexities, right? Like campaign influence. So how much dollar amount do we want to attribute to uh, one touch point versus another? Let's say, you know, you get hit on social by somebody at a company and then also somebody at the company, you know, responds to one of your emails. There's, and like, how do you attribute a dollar amount to all that? There's, there's actually a lot of, you know, as larger companies have a lot of science behind that or, you know, data science behind that. Um, again, I'm kind of gearing this video towards people just getting started with Salesforce small businesses. That becomes less important, right? You're probably going to be um, using a lot of different channels, but um, really, if you're doing something like an email campaign or a trade show, uh, it's going to be, you know, one to one. How many people can I convert from this trade show? Maybe it's important to you see, for you to see that you've been adding data to your org through a trade show. Uh, they didn't respond to your initial kind of trade show uh, reach out. But six months down the road, uh, one of your reps hit them with an email and you guys signed them on. So that would prove that, you know, going out to trade shows and using that as a source of data aggregation is uh, you know, maybe viable depending on the numbers, right? <clears throat> so here we saw the example here was John Amos was a contact. We added him to a campaign and then that influ this opportunity showed up on our influenced opportunity. Now, if I go up to a lead here, I'm going to click on Sarah. I can see that um, she was related to my campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and convert. I'm going to create an opportunity with this and I'm just going to say test email campaign so we know how to find it. And I'm going to convert this lead. And you can see here she's also related to test email campaign, uh, the test email campaign. Again, because this is sample org, she was already related to a couple of these other kind of webinars and stuff. It looked that she like she had attended. But if I jump into my test email campaign, I'm also going to see where are we? I 
guess every single op in here. There we go. Test email campaign. And I don't have a dollar amount under it. So uh, if I go over to details now, just want to show a couple things. So you have these automatic summaries that get filled in on the campaigns as well. Um, so I can see I've got six leads in the campaign. I converted one lead. You just saw me do that. I related eight contacts in the campaign. Uh, opportunities in the campaign, I have one. Uh, and that's because the other opportunities were already created, right? Before I, I went in and added my contact to the campaign. So there is, you know, part of this example is we're working with sample data. And when I added a contact, a lot of these quote unquote influenced opportunities were, were created beforehand. So they're not coming up when we look at, you know, what are the opportunities that came from the campaign that, you know, uh, what are, you know, did our cam campaign lead us as a source to that sales opportunity, which is a no. As I add dollar values to those opportunities, um, you would see these numbers change and move up. So, you know, if I come here to opportunities, we're going to go into our test one in amount. I'm just going to write 100,000. If I jump back into my details, I, I now see value opportunities in the campaign. Uh, if I were to win opportunities, you would see this value move up. Uh, it would count the number of one opportunities. So right out of the bat, or right out of the gate, I mean, you do get some good um, data using Salesforce campaigns. This is a very simple, you know, quick run through of how to, how to use them. Uh, one thing I will note as well, um, if you do, if you just signed up for a, a trial and let's say you're the admin that did the sign up, then you're going to be able to see campaigns. But uh, I'll show you a quick thing here. You need to make sure if, if you're not the kind of admin on your account, right? Maybe you just got to sign this responsibility from someone on your team, then um, you need to, it looks like we got a bad load here. Try that again. Happened again. That's odd. Uh, there's a checkbox here on a user record uh, and it's called marketing user. And that needs to be checked off in order for you to have access to uh, campaigns. If your org is a little bit more uh, complex, maybe you've already got some customizations and your admin has been um, kind of using Salesforce, I would just you know, ask them to make you a marketing user. Uh, and that's gonna allow you to look at campaigns and also kind of uh, manage members as well. Um, that, that also could be a profile setting. So just know there are some caveats with that. But if you can't see this, it doesn't mean that your org doesn't have it because it comes with Sales Cloud. It's part of that platform uh, or that app. Uh, you, so you just need to make sure you have your settings properly set up um, so you're able to see it. Uh, thanks for watching. And that's a quick um, kind of overview of Salesforce campaigns. Uh, I'll probably jump into some more detail here on kind of list emails and some of those features that you saw as well. Thank you.